there. We are going to talk today about math with sig figs. Real quick, before we get started off to the side, just a quick little idea of why we might need to do this. Let's say that I have a measurement that I'm kind of not really sure about. Like I have a beaker that has, let's say, 400 milliliters in it. And, you know, I'm just not really sure that it's exactly 400 because I measured it with a beaker. And then I add to it in some other container 7.25 milliliters. And now that I would have to measure with a graduated cylinder to get all of those digits. So if I add this together, you might think that it's 407.25 milliliters. But think about it. If you've got about 400, it actually might be like 395, or maybe it's 408, or maybe it's 392. No. And that's why 400 is written without a decimal. It's just written as 400. We don't really know. And you add 7 to it. Are you actually sure that your total is 407.25? You're not. So actually, the best you can still say is it's about 400. Okay. So what we're talking about today is if we are combining measurements, so that's going to mean add, subtract, multiply, or divide, with different degrees of accuracy and precision. That means that maybe they have a different number of sig figs or maybe a different uh, number of place values. It cannot be any more specific, no greater precision than the least accurate measurement. And this is going to be translated into simple rules for the mathematical operations. And this is gonna involve rounding your answer and we're gonna practice for both of these rules. Um, so the deal is your calculator is often going to give you answers that have a lot of digits. So, you know, you might do a calculation and it tells you that the answer is 0 0.3333333. You might not actually know it to that much precision. So we are going to look at our answers and round them. Um, so you're going to divide, you're going to decide what place value you're rounding to. And as we're going to follow normal rounding rules. If the digit after it is less than five, leave it be. And if the digit is five or greater, round it up. All right, so we are going to begin with the add and subtract rule. Towards the top, struggling here. Okay, um, so here's the deal, y'all. We're going to follow this rule exactly. When measurements are added or subtracted, you're going to limit the answer to the same number of decimal places or digits after the decimal that appear in the original data with the fewest number of decimal places and round as needed. So y'all, addition and subtraction is all about the fewest number of decimal places. So let's just jump right into our examples that we're going to do together and see how this is going to work. All right, so um, we've got 150.0 minus 0 0.507. Now, I before we even think about sig figs, y'all, um, I'm trying to type the calculator. You need to do the math, okay? So we've got 150.0 minus 0 0.507. So 149.493 is our answer that we're going to be dealing with. 149.493. All right. So 149.493. Excellent. So then we are going to look at the decimal places. So the first number, how many digits after the decimal? One. The second number, how many digits? Three. Which one is fewer? The one that has fewer digits after the decimal is the first one, one. So we can have one digit after the decimal. So we're going to stop it right there. So we've got 149.4, but there's a nine after it. So we're actually going to round up and say 149.5, and that is our answer. Now, because we had grams of water and we subtracted out some grams of NaCl, grams, take away a few grams, is still grams. And that is how you do the add subtract rule. Look at the um, digits after the decimal. Let's do number two. So we've got 0 0.015 plus 0 0.02. Step one, do the math. I can do this one on my head. I'm adding 0 
five. Okay, let's look at those digits after the decimal. This one has three. This one has two. Which one's fewer? Two digits is fewer than three. So two digits after the decimal is how we're going to round our answer. So two digits after the decimal is going to cut off right there. Again, it's 0 0.03, but there's a 5 after it, so it's actually going to round up to a 4. And that is how we do the rounding. I'm trying to make a good decimal there. And then meters plus meters is still meters. It's like if you add two bits of string together, you're just adding the meters of each one together, and that's how long your total is. Okay, we're going to do another one that isn't set up the way I like to call elementary school style. You know, like it doesn't have the decimals in line, but we can still go through the same process. All right, so example three down here. 52.3 plus 120.993. So just to double check, make sure we don't make a mistake. We've got 52.3 plus 120.993. Okay, so 173.293 is our numerical answer. One seventy three point two nine three. Um, but let's look at the digits after the decimal. We've got one digit after the decimal. We have three digits after the decimal. We want to go with the fewest, so that's going to be the one right there. So we're going to round it to one digit after the decimal. It's going to end it right there. So we're going to round it up. 173.3. And because it was grams plus grams, adding grams together, it is still grams. All right. This would be a great time to pause the video and try number four on your own. And then come back and check your work with me. Okay, example four. We're going to do the math, 5.44 minus 2.6103, 2.8297. Okay, I'm going to slide that calculator away so I can write my answer here. 2.8297. Okay, and then looking at the digits after the decimal, we've got two or four. Four. We want to go with the fewest, so that's going to be two digits after the decimal. So we're going to keep our answer up through that point and round if needed. So if we cut it off there, we do need to round up. So 2.83 and meters minus meters gives meters. All right. So to kind of sum that up, remember what I've highlighted in green here. When we we're adding and subtracting, we're going to look at the decimal places and go with the fewest. Okay. The next rule is um, there. The next rule here is um, for multiplying and dividing, and it's just a slightly different rule. Most students actually think this one's a little bit easier. So when measurements are multiplied or divided, limit the answer to the same number of sig figs that appear in the original data with the fewest number of sig figs. Round is needed. So instead of looking at just the sig figs after the decimal, we're going to look at just total number of sig figs. All right, let's do the first one in red. Example one is 2.4 times 15.82. Step one, do the math. Let's see what we get. 2.4 times 15.82, 37.968. That's five sig figs in that calculator answer. So we're going to write that down. We've got 37.968. Okay, so here's the new rule, y'all. So this is the new deal. Pay attention. The number 2.4 is two sig figs. The number 15.82 is four sig figs. So we ask ourselves which one has less. It's two. So our answer can only have two sig figs and then it has to stop. So three and seven are significant. And then our answer has to stop there. And so it's going to round up to 38 because of the nine rounds up the seven. 
And then, you know, when we add meters, we just get meters, but when we multiply meters, you know, this is like doing a length times width in math, maybe, um, you actually get meters squared like an area. So 38 meters squared would be our answer. Okay, let's try number two. Number two, 3.05 divided by 8.47. Let's do the math. Divided by 8.47. Oh my gosh, that's a long number. Look at all those digits. There's no way we're going to write all that down. So I'm going to slide it away so I can write down a little bit of it. So the calculator said point zero point three six zero zero nine four four dot dot We're not going to write all that down. That would be crazy. So we're going to look at our sig figs in the original numbers. So 3.05, that's three sig figs. 8.47, that's three sig figs. Um, this is not a trick question. Which one has fewer? Well, they're the same. So our answer can only have three sig figs. So the zero at the beginning doesn't count as significant. So we're going to do one, two, three, and then stop your answer. So it's 0 0.360. We don't need to round up or anything. And so that's our answer. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is the units on this. So if you have grams divided by milliliters, that's actually just what your unit is. So we literally just write it down, grams over milliliters, done. Okay, two more, then we're done with this. So number three, very similar, 17.982 divided by 4.13. Let's do that. 17.982 divided by 4.13. 4.35. Whoa, this is a long one, y'all. So I'm going to write down what my calculator said just to display it to you. 4.353995 dot 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 dot. Ooh. Okay, so let's look at our sig figs here. Um, the number 17.982 has five. 4.13 plus 3. We are going to go with the fewest, which is 3. So 4.35 stop. And then, so that does not round up, so it's 4.35. Just like the last one we set, talked about, the units were grams over milliliters. Grams divided by milliliters, and so that's all that your unit is. Grams over the leaders. Excellent. Okay, y'all. Um, last example, as always, this would be a great one to um, do on your own. Pause and then come back and see what I got. I got 1.34 times. Oh, goodness. 1.34 times 0 0.7488. Again, that's a pretty long number. So I'm going to slide it over so I can write it down. Great. Calculator set is 1.003392. Definitely too many sig figs. First one had three. Second one had four. We're going to have the fewest sig figs, which is three. So we're going to keep one, zero, zero, stop. So 1.00 is actually our answer. It doesn't round up. And this one didn't have any units. So we're all done with 1.00. All right, that is it. I hope it's helpful, especially if you were absent and missed this lesson. I hope you feel a little bit more caught up now. If you have any more questions, feel free to come talk to your teacher. We'd love to help you. Thanks for watching. Bye.